Bob Chapek is having a really, really bad week, to put it lightly. Things are not going well for Mr. Chapek. We're going to dive into these, the, the don't say gay bill ramifications. Um, is his job in jeopardy as CEO? There's a lot to dive into with this topic today. Up next. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard to another episode of Orange Grove 55. I brought on a fantastic panel yet again to discuss Bob Chapek, the Florida bill, the ramifications. It's going to be a stacked show. But before we get started, I want to introduce my panel. I'm going to start off with Mr. Freshly Squeeze. How are you doing today, Dre? I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. Uh, this is... Um... You know, it's it's that it's the it's the meme, right? It's uh, wow, that accelerating quickly. You know, that that kind of thing. Yeah, that's that, that's that's kind of where we are. So uh, so we we were we were talking behind the scenes here, and 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 we were like, you know, I think I think we should. I mean, look, to preface before we officially begin, I just want to say that look, um. We only really comment on the Disney company and the goings on in the Disney company, right? And when world issues come up that directly impact them, we would be doing a disservice not talking about it. So I think it's important to talk about you know how this really directly impacts not just JPEG but the but, but the Walt Disney Company. So I feel I feel it's important, and I feel our viewers will uh, will appreciate that. But anyway, never mind that. Uh, you can find me at, at Fash Guy. That's right down here, just like it's spelled. And if you want to see me, well, it's on the channel you're watching right now, which is um, at Orange Grove 55 at Freshly Squeezed, your source for juicy news and info. Squeeze fresh right from the Grove. So that's where you can find me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, down below, Alia, welcome back to the channel. How are you today? I'm well. Thank you for asking. And I'm, yes, as you mentioned, I'm Alia, also known as Alia Aloha. <laughs> 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 and that's where they can find you on, yes, on Twitter? Twitter, the bird, tweet, tweet, a bird at Alia Aloha. At Perfect. A -L -I -A 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 -L -O -H -A. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. You know, that, it's funny, Dre. Every time you play that, my my text message jingle is that same, the Star Tours thing. Yeah. And yeah. I always look at my phone like, oh, I'm going to get a text yep. message. <laughs> I do enjoy throwing you off just a little like, bit. What? <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's dive in. Let's dive into this. So I'm going to set the table just a little bit here. Yeah, please. Um, JPEG has been having a really bad week, to say the least. Um, you can see here it says Disney television, animation, distribution, staffers criticize CEO's response to the quote unquote, don't say gay bill in letters. The animation group called Bob JPEG's response tone deaf at best and incredibly dangerous at worst. Uh, Pixar is going after JPEG. Uh, Pixar employees say Disney's statement on commitment to LGBTQT community rang hollow. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's not looking too good for Mr. Chapek. It actually prompted today, just actually a few minutes ago, uh, Bob Chapek issued an apology, a company wide apology for lack of action and advocacy on the don't say gay bill. And I'll link this down below, but he's outright saying, I'm sorry, I could do better. Uh, you know, we'll continue to, to be, um, an ally to the LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus community. So things are really happening here at Disney. Okay. Uh, more specifically with JPEG, uh, there is kind of a internal, almost like mutiny against Mr. JPEG in regards to this. This is, this is really, really, um, really heating up for Mr. JPEG. Now I do want to bring up, and this is something that Alia, uh, shared with me and I'm going to go ahead and share this with you guys. Because it's very, very relevant to what we're talking about today. This is from Matthew Baloney of Puck News. Now, to set the table with Matthew Baloney, this is not somebody that just is just some like whoever kind of blogger. This guy, from what I understand, Alia, he used to be an editor with was a Hollywood reporter. Mm -hmm. Yes, an editor at the Hollywood Reporter, and he's an entertainment lawyer. 
Okay, so this guy has connections. He's got chops, mm -hmm. and and Alia is subscribed to you're subscribed to his newsletters, correct? It's in general Puck News, where you can select many. He he's kind of started it, but then he has foreign affairs writers and all that. Um, but he does the entertainment portion, and yes, I subscribe to it monthly. It's about twelve dollars, twelve to fifteen dollars. So. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll I'll link down his um. Ollie, if you can send me that website. And I'll oh, link we'll it down do. below in the description. So if people want to sign up or, you know, follow him, you know, they can do so. But per Matthew Bologna of Puck News, this is in regards to JPEG. He, and he, dro he dropped this last night. Okay. Yes. It says, last quote, night. last night, quote, the next week will be key to Bob JPEG's future as CEO of Disney. His Florida, quote, don't say gay, unquote, flip flop. And the ongoing fallout seems like an existential moment. And that Pixar employee letter that we just talked about a second ago, alleging censorship of the LGBTQ content was a brutal indictment of his, quote, we make change through content, unquote, excuse for inaction. I predict he survives, but if major Disney talent starts calling for his removal, all bets are off. Okay, Alia, I'm going to start with you because I... You have a little more to add in regards that that last part of Baloney's um, statement saying that, you know, he predicts that Chapek is going to stick around. But the big caveat is, but if major Disney talent starts calling for his removal, all bets are off. Now, you have a little insight in regards to some Jennifer Lee stuff that you think ties into that. And that Jennifer Lee stuff happened today. Is that correct? Yes. Well, so. Baloney did not elaborate on the talent. So we were brainstorming. Who could this talent be that, be that he's talking about that could have that weight with the board, Arnold, the ex other, other executives? And it would be, well, they themselves and or Feige and or Jennifer Lee and or Peter Rice. So they would have the, the most weight. And then interesting enough, uh, so yes, Bob Chapek did the the recent apology and and the statement and pausing of the of the contrib contributions, et cetera, et cetera. But about an hour prior, there was a tweet from Walt Disney and animation Animation Studios, of uh, denouncing everything that was happening, which in a way is in effect a statement from Jennifer Lee. And so it was, you could say, phase one. She wasn't calling for his removal publicly, but you could read between the lines there that. Jennifer Lee is not happy. And so it is interesting timing. Now there could be at the same time, Bob Chapek was going through reflections based on selfish and selfless reasons. But it is interesting that an hour later that this was released because he just does not want the snowball effect yeah. of Feige starting to agree with Jennifer Lee, et cetera. Oh no, absolutely. Oh man. Feige would be, would be a disaster for Mr. Chapek. And I, I've Here's said this before, uh, Dre on shows we've done months ago, well, like in regards to ScarJo, where if Feige starts to be public of, of, you know, his disapproval of Mr. Chapek and there's murmurs of him wanting to walk because of Bob Chapek, right. uh, Chapek's job is in definite jeopardy. So I think you're right, Alia. There's, it's too much of a coincidence with the Jennifer Lee tweet and then his apology. I think that he, his team probably saw the writing on the wall. If Jennifer Lee comes out, it could snowball into Kathleen Kennedy and Kevin Feige. And then he has a huge, enormous mess on his hands to say the least. Right. Dre, what are your, what are your thoughts on this, man? This is crazy. I mean, this is, this hasn't, I mean, he's, he's really in a, Bind here, and it, the events that developed were, were quite interesting, right? So the legislation was passed by the Senate, uh, pretty pretty shortly before the 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 shareholders meeting. So, I, I mean, it's it's just unfortunate timing on his behalf because the first uh, uh, calls uh, on that shareholders meeting was going to be about this. He had to address it, and he did so. And, but but now the, in the way that he's addressed it, it's kind of put him on even maybe even a, on a rockier footing than before, <laughs> because now he's looked at as uh, like you said before, OG, when we were when we were having this conversation uh, previously, it looks like he's you know not only flip flopping but maybe ingenuine, and he really has riled up a lot of you know I mean he's he's, 
he's rather a lot of feathers on, on, on both sides here. And it really has put him in an unenvious position. I mean, you know, Alia, you, you know, the, the, the talent thing is, I mean, that's going back to like the ScarJo days and how, and how that could have affected Chapek in that instance. But now you have these social and these uh, cultural issues that are, that the company has kind of, you know, uh, stood by uh so much in, in 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 what they've said but now in these actions here i mean it's 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 it, re it really has put him in the crosshairs and 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 to speak of talent for just a moment you know we we remember during the days of the pandy when you know they they cut like thirty thousand uh employees and cast members across the entire uh, walt disney company right but they you know those executive bonuses and and so forth were you know maybe reinstated and their pay was reinstated and I always said, look, that's managerial and, you know, upper management, you know, kind of talent retention is what that is. You have to pay rates so as to not get plucked by other studios. And but but the, yeah. but they come out that way. Not really. Right. But those are the kind of things that you do to ensure that your talent base and what really sets you apart from these other studios is retained. So mm -hmm. I agree with you, Ali. I mean, if if you have a contingent of talent. And certain, maybe even certain executives coming at you, I, I, that's not a fight that I don't think he can win. No, even it's not. And it, financials and it's crazy looking to, good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy to think about because when the ScarJo thing happened last summer, I was like, wow, that that this is a total disaster for JPEG, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like thinking like, oh, nothing can really get worse than that. I mean, he survived that. He's good. <laughs> well, I was wrong. This is a this is a lot worse than that. To be quite honest with you, this is really bad. It's, it, it, this is this is tough right here. And as we were saying before, I mean, <sighs> people have people obviously have taken issues with his stance before the bill, the, the legislation was passed in the Florida Senate, right? And how he was silent. He even admits it in his apology to the uh, company today that he was silent, right? Yeah. Um. To change course in the way they in the way he did, I, I mean, it, it it was it was almost worse. Um, it was almost it, it, it's it's he's he's done demonstrable damage to not just the brand but to himself, and 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 it, it almost feels like he was sabotaged from the very beginning, and he's continuing to be so because remember this was an issue that Bob Iger himself kind of stirred up initially. And and it's something that the company has has had to contend with this whole time. And right on the eve of the shareholders meeting, I mean, this couldn't have happened uh, in, in a worse fashion. And, and to see how he's kind of pivoted now in a way that really hasn't placated or satisfied anybody, really. Um, I, I think at least that's the tone I'm getting from the room. I, I, I might be wrong. Maybe his apology will be heartfelt and, you know, for his sake, I hope it is. But Me at the too. same time, it, it, it almost, it almost seems just a, a logical the way he's, he's going about this. It's, it's, it, 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 I don't know. I might, I might be getting a little bit more, uh, I don't know what you, what you would say, like conspiratorial, but it, it just feels like sabotage. It, well, it's well, the only why would Iger want to sabotage him? Because, I mean, yes, it is. You do wonder how things would be different if Bob Iger did not quote tweet President Biden, because that's when everybody's like, oh, wait a second, what's Disney right. going to do about this? And then, but then, yes, it came back to then Iger about the recent Variety article about the Pixar employees. Variety pointed out, well, wait a second, Iger was yeah. in, the, in the lead during this all this content. And so when Pixar's saying that they were sabotaged and told to, cut things out. That was Iger saying that. But but you do wonder, I mean, why do you feel Iger was sabotaged? Was oh, I, I never, I never, um, I, if I alluded to the fact that Iger himself was doing it, I do apologize. Okay. Um, it, it, I'm not saying, I'm not really putting the onus on any one person, but I don't think his advisors are trustworthy. Uh, it's just, it, it, they, they, they seem to be, uh, whether it be his instincts or his instincts may be be changing because of people around him. It just seems like he's handled this thing badly from the very onset. Well, and it's and, just, and, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no. Well, yeah. And, and the thing too is like, we're in a very interesting position right now because we have, we have Bob Chapek, the current Disney CEO, mm -hmm. and we have Bob Iger who, who 
was beloved as a CEO and he, but he's, but Bob Iger is still very active, right. In terms mm -hmm. of like, you know, his opinions, his voices on Twitter, what have you. So you have like this dynamic now where you have the actual CEO, Bob Chapek, and then you yeah. have the former CEO and the former CEO's opinions and actions might not be in line with the company's narrative or whatever it is at the moment. Right. So when, when I, when Bob Iger is tweeting out, like, you know, like you said, quote, tweeting the, the, the Biden stuff, right. Against the bill. And then Bob Chapek is like, well, we're not going to discuss it. Well, <laughs> that creates a problem for Bob Chapek. Totally. Absolutely. You know, a hundred percent because you, you, because of uh, Iger's previous stances, you expect that to be retained from CEO to CEO. You expect that kind of the, the, those 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 values and that that advocacy to continue. And so people kind of came in with the expectation, and when that wasn't met, that's really where these these controversial things start. And I think for Chapek himself, he might have maybe initially maybe he thought he was he was, you know. Maybe he thought he, that the company should be more business focused and minded, and that obviously wasn't uh, wasn't copacetic to a large contingent of not only uh, consumers of the Disney company but also to its employees. And that yeah. was just that was just that's just badly handled there. And and look, I'm not I'm, I'm not trying to defend Bob Chapek. I'm not saying oh well somebody's sabotaging him. He's in the right. You know no no no. He's made really bad decisions. <laughs> like yeah. really really bad. Okay. I'm just saying that the that. For how bad they are, uh, it, 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 even if he even if he is a bad decision maker, the, for, for from how things have have worked out, it's almost as if he is being sabotaged just due to how bad his decision making has been this entire time. I mean, it's crazy. It's insane. It, it, it's it's been it's been surprisingly bad. It's been surprisingly bad, you know. Um, and and when, and when the Pixar artists and animators employees, um, you know, wrote that letter, yeah you know, stating that, you know, they were being censored. Yep. That, that was a huge ramping up of the whole situation, in, in my huge. opinion. I mean, that that really ramped up the whole that it, it, it went from like, uh, it, it, it went from like, you know, 20 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour, because now you have Pixar piling on. And it was really not a good look. And and Alia, you did mention now the variety article, I think you shared mentioned that they did mention Iger in regards to that censorship, right? With Pixar. Mm -hmm. They it, said, so, so keep in mind, Iger was CEO. He acquired the company and then he was CEO until recently in December. And so the majority of what the output of production from Pixar came from his leadership. So when Pixar says executives told them to censor this or censor that, that was Iger. So Variety was not letting him off the hook that that's yeah. interesting and that's fair that's fair and, that, and it's interesting fair. that it is fair because you know look we have to place accountability where it lies i mean the reality of the situation is chapek has only been there for two years um most of the movies being released right now have been in production before he even took over so it was fair i think for variety to acknowledge that fact that a lot of these films that were being censored you know were under Iger's tenure, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's that that's that's a fair point to point out. Now, I want to ask you, Alia, in terms of the censorship of the Pixar films, do you feel it's kind of um, Disney is just not ready yet to kind of go all out with the LGBTQT? thing in their animated films or do you think there's other factors at play here as to why they're kind of pulling back and censoring um i think it was from i don't think it was from the the big picture goodwill humanity side i think it was from business unfortunately they were thinking they were thinking of russia box office chinese box office yeah. and so we're seeing what the what China's doing now with limiting the box office. I hope that's a wake up call for all the studios that you know China should be bonus. And well, so the production budgets and the content, the creative content should just be for most of worldwide except China and Russia. And then their bonus, if Russia ever opens up box office, there's the whole economic issue now, but um, with the foreign governments and their, that decision, but. 
China and Russia should be seen as bonus. Things should not be planned for either of them. But at the time when those movies were in production in Greenland, that's what those executives were thinking of. We don't want to lose right. Russia and China. Well, and I would also include I would also include the Middle East in that conversation as well. Yes, I mean, yes, they were, yes they were, that's true. That's true. Right, and they, they were trying to they were trying to you know have these things be wide in distribution, and it's it's you make compromises when you do that because of you know cultural differences, of course. But this is why this is why you know I have criticized Iger in the past about his attempting to placate China in the way that he did, in attempting to 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 to, 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 so to speak, get in bed with them in the way that he did with Shanghai Disneyland. I think he had a notion that, hey, if I just play ball, if I, if I, if we build this park out here, it'll put us on a, a, a even better footing than maybe some of the other studios, right? And they'll, and, and, and if we capitulate to their demands, we'll get access to their box office because they only get like maybe like 15 films a year from the American box office, so they're very choosy on who are they're going to let in, and he. You know, he 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 wanted that market, right? And that was the that was the carrot that they dangled in front of him. And now he's come to recognize that that was maybe a mistake. He had a recent interview with, I think, it was CNBC in Star Wars: Galaxy's Edge. Interestingly enough, uh, right on the kind of eve of when he was, uh, you know, officially retiring, and he admitted it. He's like, "Yeah, my my optimism about China has soured." In, uh, so to speak, right? It, it, I think he's come to recognize that that was maybe a mistake. But now, you know, I mean, that's always going to be something that people are going to hold over your head when it comes to these uh, kind of decisions. And it's going to be interesting and fascinating to see how the company pivots uh, either away or or through those kind of issues. Uh, we saw uh, with Eternals how they were pretty firm. They were like, hey, you know what? We're going to release this. If we get banned, we get banned. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you, you got to give them uh you know, credit for you know <laughs> sticking to their guns, so to speak. Right. But but now, I mean, this is you know this this like we were saying before, OG. Chapek has played, I think, the business and corporate world, uh, you know, the 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 corporate arena, very effectively to yeah. get to where he is, right? But the social and cultural world is completely different. Yeah. Yep. You play by an entirely different set of rules, and yep. he has to recognize that. And unfortunately, in this case, uh, he he he, I don't think he did. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an example here, and you you hit the nail on the head, Dre, with that. I mean, here's the thing: you can be the most business minded, smart, intellectually great, you know, whatever CEO, right? But if you don't have that social, th those social skills and that, and that kind of people, those people skills and that PR thing, um, it, it, it kind of makes all of the rest of it kind of moot, really. I mean, look, I work with, and I'm not calling anyone out, okay, I'm a <laughs> nine to five job. I work a regular nine to five job. And there are a couple people that they're, they're, by the their their work is by the book they rarely make mistakes with their work itself right but they have a lot of like personality issues with you know a lot they they, they, they come off kind of hostile and give a lot of attitude towards clients and what have you right that's a problem. You can do by the book, by the letter, perfect work. But if you don't have the people skills and you're making your clients upset, you're pretty much dead in the water. You might as well not even have the perfect work at that point. And that's kind of how I feel about Chapek. He might be great in terms of the financials. He might be great in terms of Wall Street. He might be great with business strategy and what have you. But he has no clue. He's completely oblivious to the public relations end of this job. And that is his Achilles heel. He has got to get if he's going to stay on as CEO, which I'm actually not even sure if that's even going to happen anymore. I don't even know. But if he's going to stay on as CEO, he's got to get that in order because that will be. The reason why he ends up getting getting fired. The the board there there comes a point where no matter how good your your quarters are, if the board feels you're a liability and you're in the headlines every week for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. you're out of there. They don't mm -hmm. want to deal with that. They'd rather get someone like Peter Rice who can provide the same quarterly results and not be a problem in the headlines every week. 
you know? Yeah, or 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 they might even be okay with taking a little bit of a financial hit if it means that, you know, they stay out of the limelight kind of thing. Uh, you know, right. what that is, I'm not sure, but but I think Ah oh, man, I mean this is this has been a this has been a it's been a pretty eventful couple of weeks for the for the Disney company. And a lot of that has to do with JPEG. And unfortunately it's kind of fallen on his doorstep. Hey, you're the guy at the top. That's that's where it's gonna be. And uh uh you know, like we said before on this on this on this uh, program, he hasn't really navigated these waters uh, quite well. I, you know, as as we come into this more socially aware era, right? Uh, that we're that we're all kind of going through uh, together. Um, you you have to be able to navigate that that well, and unfortunately, uh, that, it, it was a miss in this case. But uh, Alia, do, do you think that Chapek can? Do you think JPEG can rebound and maybe handle some of the PR uh, issues that OG alludes to? Oh, good question. Um, <laughs> he Not has much. to. He made he made promises in in that apology, so he'll oh, need yeah. to keep it. It can't be seen as not genuine, as broken promises. He needs to go forward with that. Um, there's a lot of it, though, will be behind the scenes that won't really be known because some of it has to do with content. That's years down the road. Some of it's don donations, contributions. Uh, that's sometimes not immediately known unless uh, even by investigative journalists right away. And so that would be then people on the inside, Arnold, the board, executives being able to validate that. So that for them, they'll be able to observe that. And if he doesn't keep his word with that, then there could be issues. But if he keeps that, his word with that, then there's hope. There's hope. And so, you know, it's, this is interesting. And, and this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to word this very carefully. I'm a big fan of, of polling, not just for politics but for a range of issues right and, and and public sympathies when it comes to even like d plus and disney and stuff like that and what you find in the polling is that families at least in this country just you know they they lean families with uh, you know two-parent households with kids they lean slightly um which they say a, a little bit more right-leaning than than maybe left-leaning just just you know using a uh, that kind of general terminology, right? Do you think Chapek can can negotiate that, especially with it being kind of seen as a family brand, effectively in a way that maybe doesn't maybe doesn't ostracize one, uh, you know, a, 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 a number of groups on one side or the other? Do you think it's possible? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough one, Dre. That's a tough one. We live in a very polarized society, and I don't, I don't know if that's if that's something that. See, the thing with the, the problem with Chapek is like Bob Iger was a total opposite. Bob Iger could sell ice to a penguin. Okay, mm -hmm. Bob Iger, he could like he was a master at just public relations. He's got the charisma. People love him. I mean, he he convinced. You know, Pixar, Marvel, George Lucas to sell, Fox. I mean, this guy has what it takes on that personal level. Chapek just does not. He's really lacking. Chapek is really, really lacking in this arena. And I don't know if he has it in him to sort of navigate those waters in a way that sort of keeps everyone happy. I, I just don't know I mean, if he has it in him. I really don't. That's true. His contract ends next next february he might even decide i don't want this anymore right. uh, it might this be not for me it might you, be i mean forget getting fired he might just say i resign yeah yeah, yeah it's a, it's a tough call and 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 here's the thing too and and look i'm not i'm not trying to pretend like it's an easy job at all um no. but when it comes to managing anything really but especially a company like disney you have to sort of, as a leader, have to understand, like, when, like, when to, like, when you make decisions, when to stand your ground and when to pull back and apologize. And this is the second time now that Che Peck has had to pull back and apologize. First was ScarJo. Yeah. He had to backtrack, and, you know, and now with this. 
And I respect him in the sense that I respect him in the sense that he's at least able to do that, where he can actually change course and pull back and, and, and apologize or, you know, when he, when he needs to, I respect that. Me too. But there also comes a point though, where like as a leader, when you find yourself having to apologize for these massive mistakes within a couple of years, something's wrong, you know, something's wrong. Like I I understand he, he, he's apologizing and he's, he's, he's changing course and that's great. But why are we here in the first place? You know, like that's the thing. It's, it's, it's an issue. It's an issue for him big time. Go ahead, Alia. You were going to say something to uh, either of our points. Oh, no, (laughs) I was just saying that's true and nodding. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, yeah, well, thank well, you for checking, though. Oh no, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. No, no, we we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to pass you up. Man. But uh, but look, I it's I think you I think you're right, OG. It's a very like I, I'm not envious of the CEO position at all. No, it's such a it's such a mega company, and that's why Susan Arnold was put as chair of the board because they I mean even the board felt that it was a two person job because the the company is so vast it's so big they appeal to so many different demographics so many different people so many different cultures so many different uh continents even you know full of right. countries and, and and different and different expectations when it comes to that so it's 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 never going to be it's never going to be easy uh, without question, just put me at the top of the parks and resorts division. I'll be fine. You know, I, I do not want the CEO position is what I'm saying, but no, not at all. The, the, <laughs> but, but I think, I, I think you're right. OG. I think part of being that leader at the top is kind of knowing when to zig, when to zag. Right. And I think, I think in rapid succession, he zigged when he should have zagged and zagged when he should have zigged. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's that's, that's why I'm like, why, why are you doing this? You know, it's like, why right. are you making this problem worse uh, for yourself? You know, yeah. um, it's, uh, and then with the Scar Joe thing, I mean, we, we've said it before, but, but, you know, he, he got out of that situation. And from what I understand, he did cave uh, with the Scar Joe thing. I, I, I guess uh, I've told the story before, but I think it's been confirmed now, given uh, his recent actions, that I guess he was at he was at some uh, you know uh, presser or media event or whatever, and he was asked about the Scar Joe thing again, even though it had been months down the line. And wow. you know, after after that kind of you know, you know how he answers questions, right? Maybe not, <laughs> maybe not the most gracefully, right? Right. But being put on the spot again really really upset him. And when he hit the car, he's like. Get get to the lawyers on the phone. Let's 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 get this. You know, let's take care of this. This is obviously not going away in the way that I was advised that it would, and that's why I think his that that got settled because if it didn't, her case was actually delayed to this month. So oh yeah, it would have been a bigger mess for him. Oh <laughs> boy, oh it was my about goodness around gracious. now. <laughs> Unbelievable. If I remember oh, correctly. Oh man, that would have been the yeah. two time and. I, Imagine if she had gotten to discovery and imagine uh, if that had been public. Oh my God. Oh, it would nah, be. I, I don't know if JPEG as CEO, he could survive that. I, 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 that would be, I think that, that might've been too much. That, that might be too much for him. The only thing, uh, the only thing that could upset talent more than maybe social or political issues is money. <laughs> so right. you would have been on both fronts. Like, Oh really? You're not going to stand for this. And you're going to you know, have my paycheck in, in the you know in 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 in, in the in the crosshairs? No, 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 that's not going to happen. So that's that. Yeah, that would have been a one-two punch for sure. But it yeah. it showed that look, I, you know, he recognized in that situation that you know maybe we don't take the uh, the 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 uh, blunt line that we usually would, right? We don't steamroll talent like this. Maybe we right. do come to some agreement, which I do give him credit for. But but you you just can't handle, you just can't. You just can't apologize your way out of this one, and there's no act of, um, there, there's there's really no 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 act that you can kind of feasibly do to placate some of these issues in a way that maybe you could with Scar Joe. You can't just you know sign a big check and and say hey I'm right. sorry right. These these things are handled a lot more uh, a lot differently, and uh, I don't think it worked out here. Yeah, because he tried it's with the nonprofit and they said no thank you. We, yeah, we said, more now that was funny. I was gonna play that audio, but uh, we're out of time. That was that was interesting, right? He said, "Oh, we're donating five million to this," and it's like, 
no, you're not. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was quite interesting. Now, I did want to bring up one last point before we close it out. We only have a sure. few minutes, but there is this tweet, and this is this is interesting to me because it kind of brings up like the different oh, approaches. Yes. Uh-huh. I say, this is from Natasha. This is from Natasha. She says. I'm I'm truly a fan of both companies and theme parks. I've stated this before, but Universal constantly makes backhanded comments at Disney with no prompting, and I find it hilarious that all of a sudden they're silent because they're guilty too. They should be held accountable too. More Ariel, guilty. <laughs> they contributed more money. Way more money. <laughs> Way more right? money. Which is interesting, and it's not like here. Here's the thing: it's not like Comcast is like this mom and pop kind of organization in Florida. They are the second biggest theme park operator in Florida, and they're only getting bigger with Epic Universe. Um, I mean, Alia, I'll start with you. Why do you believe that there's really not that much accountability when it comes to the, the Universal and Comcast? Why is kind of the like the the the, the bulk, the ninety nine point nine percent majority of the attention on Chapek and Disney? Because. When you mention Disney in a headline, that, that catches attention. Um, and conversing about this, it'd be brought up about the, the the pop culture significance of Disney, which I understand as a Disney fan. Yet with politicians, facts are facts. The contribution amount means you have a greater chance of a seat at the table. So it doesn't matter if you love or hate Disney, the fact is Comcast donated more money, which means they have a greater chance of having a seat at a table with these politicians. And so if anything, if people were really concerned about what's happening with that Florida legislature behind the scenes, Comcast had more leverage than Disney, technically. And so I don't understand why there's not this, because of that reason, with the politician, why there wasn't that the equal, an equal amount or greater anger at Comcast at Universal. Yes, and and it's interesting because it's not just Universal, right? There's a plethora of companies that have invested mm-hmm. now in Florida, uh, as as uh, you know, uh, California kind of falls into the spotlight, it falls out of the spotlight, and Florida comes up in it for a various amount of reasons, right? And they've all political, uh, I'm sorry, uh, donated to these political campaigns one way or another. Uh, or at least most of them anyway. And yet we don't put that same onus on them. And I think a lot of that has to do with, unfortunately, I mean, maybe not unfortunately, but but as it's played out, Disney has been a lot more vocal of an advocate for, for these kinds of issues, right? And I mean, they have internal policies and they've been very, you know, they, they, they've taken a very um, uh, um, loud stance, at least in the past. On these issues and so when you put that expectation out there there's a contingent that looks to you and says okay where are you at now <laughs> and that pattern was started by Iger for better or for worse like, I'm not I'm not you know not one way or another on it it's just I'm just saying that when you do that there is gonna be a, a, a certain subset of, of people who are looking for your stances on, on more and other things and you're gonna be placed under the microscope even that much more because of what you've said in the past. They're going to hold you to that. Uh, right. And um, I think that's why Disney uh, gets the, the 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 fair brunt of this. Also, too, they're one of the largest employers in, in Florida. So that, that, that also has something to do with that. They represent the interests of a lot of people. Yeah, no, you're, you got you both are absolutely correct. You're absolutely you both are absolutely correct. Alia mentioning that, you know, that the headline grabbing Disney is, is a factor. You mentioned that, you know, Disney has, has kind of injected itself more into this. And all of these are, this is like not a one issue, one reason thing. I think you're, you're both absolutely correct in all these points you're making. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just think like cultural relevance, I think Disney is more culturally relevant in a lot of ways than a lot of the universal properties at this, at this time, at least Um, that might change, you know, but right now I think it is, but um, it's, it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, Real quick before we go, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of close it out with a little bit of pull, little little bit of uh, prediction time here. Real oh. quick before we close it out, a little prediction time. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, I'll start with you, Dre. W- what do you think? But do you think they? But okay, because Chapex contract uh, it gets re-upped in mm-hmm. February of 2023, less mm-hmm. than a year. Is he gonna Is he gonna make it, <laughs> or no? 
Well, I think uh, I would have said like 50-50, right? But with with Jennifer Lee and the statements that we're hearing from other subdivisions of the company, it does sound like he's been able to kind of get everybody together and say, hey, look, we got to go on a unified front on this. We got to blitzkrieg this, essentially, right? And and just kind of nip this in the bud on all division levels. And if he's got the if, we've, if he's got the support of Jennifer Lee and other talented individuals, I'd say he's pretty much safe. But you never know. You know, Kevin Feige could be on a different page. I'd say if you get uh, a Kevin Flaggy or a Peter Rice or somebody real big that's that just disagrees and says this is just not good enough, then that would really call into question. But it doesn't look like that might be happening. It might skirt by even just now. But I think Ali Akron brings up a good point. When his contract comes up for renewal, maybe even he has second thoughts about this whole thing. Uh, so it's it's quite it's quite fascinating what is playing out here and some something to watch. By the way, the whole <sighs> political campaign donations, dark money thing. That uh, it makes my skin crawl. Just, just to put me it too. Out there. Uh, me too. Not, <laughs> not great. Not great. But Alia, go ahead. What, uh, right, what do you have to say on this? Perfectly said, Dre. I, I completely agree with you. I think, I think he's he's safe because of that uh, grand apology. I think. Um, he pacified Jennifer Lee because it was a, a, a tweet by Walt Disney Animation Studios, but in general, that Jennifer Lee. Um, and I think he, so I think he pacified the greater talent there. I think he's fine there. Knock on wood, nothing <laughs> else happens <laughs> for him. But yes, I think the the great mystery will be, does he want this job? And um, right now he might be, you never know, he might be on the fence after D23, maybe when he'll decide. But um, I think that's more of the mystery. Will he decide to resign? Will he decide to stay or not? Um, I think for now, unless, yes, something more happens, I think he's safe in that way. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. Like, does he want to stay on board? Because you have to understand what that does to a person mentally. Like, to constantly read. Can't be fun. <laughs> right? Like, people hate you. People hate, everyone hates you for this and that. And every, it, it just, it, it's got to wear down on a person. No matter how rich you are, no matter how powerful you are, to constantly hear that, you know, that, you know, you're hated by all these fans and stuff. It's got to, it's got to have an impact on you. And, you know, and he's and not on social too. media, so I don't think he, really feels the breath but i mean it gets yeah. it, it filters down to him i'm pretty I think sure it, i think it but it, i think it helps he's not on social media so he's probably thank goodness I'm but he media. knew he knew he was gonna get it at the so at the shareholders meeting he knew those those calls were gonna yes. come in and they were gonna give it to him first call he had boom was on this topic so and then d23 he, expo is gonna be here before we know it too. oh and boy so. oh man Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Well, I, well, and here's yeah. the thing too. And and I agree with you, Alia, for, for, for his own mental health and like, you know, whatever. I think it's good. He's off, he's off social media. I don't know though, from a, from hit from, but from a, from a business standpoint though, I kind of feel like it might do him some good to get on some social media and kind of get in mm -hmm. down with the people and kind of feel what people are saying in real time. That might help him instead of constantly having everything fed through like this focus group sort of, committee thing i i don't know i don't know I'm, I'm, mm. I'm yeah but it comes with a lot of responsibility though i mean you could literally tank the stock just depending on what you actually tweet out there i mean that, it's, it's that's a very, true that's he that's might true. not want to take that chance very risk yeah it's a very risky move and uh seeing his instincts play out so far <laughs> 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 let's let's keep him off the bird app just, just that's for probably a little what bit. arnold was saying to him he might have been like you know i might want to get on twitter explain myself but she probably said don't not a good yeah idea. yeah yeah <laughs> no it's bad shapes no yeah. <laughs> Susan, 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 if there ever is a official bob chapek like twitter or or whatever it'll probably be susan arnold running it she probably has yeah. the password yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly what do you want to say how do we craft this <laughs> <laughs> well thank you both for coming on today thank this you. was a fast fascinating fascinating conversation today um we're going to close it out. I'm going to start with you, Dre, if you can let everyone home know where they can find you on social media. Best place to find me is uh, at VashGuy on Twitter. That's right down there, just like it's spelled. And to see me, well, it's on the channel you're watching right now, Orange Grow 55 <laughs> at Freshly Squeezed, your source for juicy news and info. Squeeze fresh right from the Grove. So that is where you can find me. By the way, hey, if you got any comments on this kind of stuff, keep it civil, guys. Keep it civil. But uh, like, subscribe. 
Comment below with your thoughts. We, we love hearing from you. Like I said, you can reach out to me anytime. We love hearing from you as well. We incorporate a lot of your ideas quite uh, a little bit more regularly than you would think. So uh, please keep it on coming. And uh, until next time. <laughs> oh, did I get a text message? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to check. <laughs> and uh, Alia, if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media. On Twitter at uh, Alia Aloha. <laughs> There it is. There it is. A L I A A A O H A. There she Perfect. is. Thank you both. And thank, thank you, you all for watching. Thank you so much. This was a fantastic conversation. Comment down below with your opinions. I know you guys have opinions on this one. Anything JPEG just, just gets crazy. People just, you know, everyone's got a lot of passion and opinions out there. It's, it's fantastic. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. Comment down below. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.